hello there, Ross developers. Hello and welcome to a new open class. So today we are going to uh, be talking about the uh, latest uh, simulation version of Gazebo, which is known as uh, Gazebo Sim, and uh, its integration with ROS2. There are some new concepts here in the way that uh, the Gazebo Sim simulator communicates with uh, ROS2. And we are going to be exploring a little bit uh, this. Uh, it's uh, uh, very interesting. So, so, so yeah, let's go for it. Uh, but before uh, starting, let me ask, as always, if everything is fine. I can see some people here already in the chat. Andres Gomez, Matevs. So uh, please confirm if everything is fine, if you can hear me properly, if the image is uh, good, so that we can uh, get started as soon as possible. So um, yeah, then uh, meanwhile, I'm going to be switching already to my computer uh, screen. Let me do that right now. So there, there we go. All right, let me open here the... the um, the live class page so that I can have the chat here. All right, there we go. So all good. Yes, everything is good. 10-4. Hello, good. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so it looks like uh, everything is fine, which means that we are ready to get started. Then uh, I can see uh, a lot of people here in the chat. I don't know if maybe you have already experience with previous open classes, if this is your first open class. In any case, I'm going to, to repeat it one more time. So every time before starting an open class, what uh, all of you have to do is to get the class project, the class project, all right? Then this is, this is very easy. All you have to do is to click here in the button that you have right above the chat right here, which says fork and open the class project. So I'm going, I'm going to click here myself in order to open uh, the class project. There we go. So uh, as soon as you click on this button, what, uh, what is going to happen is that you are going to be redirected to the project main page, which is this one that you can see here in my screen right now. All right. Then here in the in the right side you have the streaming area with the with the live video, the chat, so that you can write your your questions, uh, your feedback, etc. All right. I'm going to minimize this in my case so that I have a bit more space for for the project. So let me actually move this to another screen and minimize it here. There we go. This to another screen. Actually, let me go to the class page and open the chat here. There we go. All right, then uh, this is going to create a copy also of this project in your account. All right, so if you come here to the My Projects section, here in the left panel, in the Construct page, if you go here, you are going to get a copy of the project. As you can see, I have here mine. And this copy is going to be for you forever, uh, basically. Yeah, so not only for today's class, but you can uh, come back to this project, open it, work with it, uh, I don't know, uh, next week, next month, whenever you uh, want. All right? And uh, then finally, after uh, some seconds, the project page, page should uh, load completely. Mine is almost there. And uh, as soon as it, as it gets loaded, you are going to see here a notebook, all right? Mine is here uh, still being loaded. It's going to finish in a few moments, but you are going to, uh, you should see something like this, all right? You should see the uh, notebook of today's class being loaded here. There we go. And this is basically the, 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 the guide that we are going to follow during today's class. Yeah, here you are going to find all the information, all the instructions, the commands that we are going to be executing during today's class. All right? Is it clear? Yeah? So far, so good. Have you been able to open to uh, open all of you the project for today's class? Still loading? Yes, yes. See Daniel, Sebastian, Matev. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Then I'm going to leave a few seconds so that uh, the project is loaded for everybody. And then, as I always say, please, 
this is an interactive class, all right? The reason why I am sharing this project with all of you is so that you can, uh, you can practice during the class, yeah? So during the class, I'm going to be explaining uh, different things and I'm going to be running some demos, some live demonstrations, okay? And anything that I do here from my side, you can reproduce it as well. Yeah, this is uh, because basically this project, the project that, ha that I have shared with you, the one that you have just opened, is an exact copy of my environment. Okay, so anything that I do here from my site, you can also do it from your site. Yeah, and we do this because we strongly believe at the construct that the best way of learning is by doing, by practicing. Yeah, not just by listening uh, to me and seeing what I am uh, doing or what I am explaining, but, uh, but you're going to really learn if you get to practice and do it by yourself. All right? Okay, then, uh, yeah, so here I have my uh, notebook opened in my project. As you can see, today we are in open class number 177, and we are going to talk about Gazebo Sim with ROS2. Okay, uh, so Gazebo Sim with ROS2 is a very huge uh, topic. Uh, it has many things. We are going to focus on the communication between Gazebo Sim and ROS2. Okay, this communication is uh, done through a package known as the ROS Gazebo Bridge. Okay, we are going to get into that in a moment. Um, yeah, and here we are going to be launching a simulation, but I want uh, to wait a little bit until we start the simulation. Okay. Later, we are going to go back here. So, but uh, before actually getting started with the, with the topic of this class, which is, uh, is, as I was saying, the ROS Gazebo Bridge package, I want to clarify a little bit uh, the, the, the terms that we are using, okay? Because uh, lately, in the recent years, there, there have been many changes in this. So basically, there are three uh, names that probably you are familiar with. Yeah, first one is Gazebo Classic, Ignition, and Gazebo Sim. Okay, have you heard these names ever before? Are you familiar with them? Do you know uh, the differences between all of them? Here in the chat. Amna, Amna is familiar with the names. Gazebo Classic, yes. The rest, no. Okay. So, so, no. All right, all right. So I, I see a bit of everything. Then, basically, Gazebo Classic is the Gazebo Simulator that probably um, all of us have used. If we... Uh, if we have been working with ROS over the last years, the, the, the uh, initial gazebo, the initial simulator, the initial robot simulator that was uh, working with uh, ROS was known as gazebo, yeah, the gazebo simulator. Then this gazebo simulator is now known as gazebo classic. Okay? This is because some years ago, gazebo evolved let's say, evolved into what is what was known at the time as Ignition Gazebo. Yeah? Ignition Gazebo was like the uh, uh, next gen, the evolution of the initial Gazebo Classic. Yeah? So we had uh, the Gazebo Classic, which was the original version, and then this version uh, was evolved, uh, introducing many improvements and, uh, and, and new concepts, evolved it into a, a new simulator which was known as Ignition Gazebo. All right? But uh, in any case, both, both, both of them depend on the uh, Open Source Robotic Foundation, yeah? which are also the creators of, of, um, of ROS. Okay? Now, what is Gazebo Sim? Well, Gazebo Sim is the latest uh, name that has received Ignition Gazebo. Yeah. So uh, very recently, uh, actually, it was in April 2022. Yeah. Open Robotics announced that they were retiring Ignition Gazebo name in favor of Gazebo Sim. Okay. But in practical terms, Ignition and Gazebo Sim are the same. Okay. This 
change from ignition to gassy bosim, basically it's a rebranding, okay? So uh, uh, the, the simulator uh, in the background is basically the same, but it, have, uh, it has just received a name change, and then therefore some of the, uh, of the commands of the API keywords have also changed, okay? Yeah, so here you can see an image in the notebook down below of Gazebo Classic, yeah? Probably this image looks familiar to you. And then here in the right side, we have the new Gazebo Sim. Latest Gazebo Sim. Okay. Yeah. Does this make sense or clarifies a little bit all these uh, different names? Um, so Ross Lunan says, Classic is basically uh, EOL, end of life, and doesn't work with Rust to Humble. Yes, exactly. So Gazebo Classic has uh, its uh, EOL, end of life. If I'm not wrong, it's in 2025, okay? So from 2025, Gazebo Classic is no longer being, uh, going to be supported, all right? So it's going to become basically deprecated, yeah? And then we are going to have Gazebo Sim, which is the evolved, uh, evolved version of Gazebo Classic. Yes, it makes sense, very clear. All right, then we are going to start by doing something, all right, because uh, this change, this uh, re renaming from Ignition to Gazebo Sim happened in the Gazebo Garden version. Okay. And in this project, <coughs> cur currently, the version that we have installed is Fortress, okay? And Fortress is still Ignition, okay? So what we are going to do is to install Gazebo Garden by just executing a simple bash script command here, okay? So in order to do this, we are going to start by opening a new web shell, all right? How to do this? Very easy. You, you have to come here to the bottom menu and click on the first icon here, which says Web Shell. All right, so I'm going to click here myself. And as you can see, this opens a, a new uh, terminal. Yeah, a regular Linux terminal where you can execute commands. And here you have this script. You can check it if you want check the constants, but basically you can see that what we are doing is to installing Gazebo Garden, which is the uh, latest version. Well, actually not, not latest, because I think there, there is already a, a newer one, Harmonic, if I'm not wrong. But uh, this one, it's already, uh, so Gazebo Garden already is known as Gazebo Sim, while the previous version, which was Fortress, it's known as Ignition. Okay, so this is a key difference from uh, one distribution to another one. So here we are going to install, on top of Fortress, we are going to install Garden. So I'm going to copy this command here directly from the notebook, and I'm going to paste it to the terminal here. And here you are going to see that uh, some processes are going to get started here, and basically what's going on is that uh, Gazebo Garden is being installed here in the project, okay? Why, why am I, I am installing Gazebo Garden here in the project? Well, because this way I'm going to be able to show um, both, okay? I'm going to show some examples using Ignition and some other examples using Gazebo Sim so that you can see the difference, okay? I think this is going to be interesting, and you are going to see that practically yeah, everything is the same, okay? Yeah, so please go ahead and uh, install, execute this command in your project as well, okay? Yep. Okay, it, it, should, it shouldn't take too long. Okay, maybe one minute, something like this, to, to finish the installation. Maybe a 
two minutes maximum. Okay, but it, it shouldn't take it shouldn't take too long. All right. Here you can see, yeah, Gazebo Garden and all the different libraries and things that are needed. Okay. And uh, meanwhile, the installation finishes. I want to introduce this ROS GZ bridge. There you go. So installation has finished already. Okay. I would I want to introduce this ROS GZ bridge or, or ROS Gazebo bridge package. Okay. In 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 the new uh, Gazebo, yeah, in Gazebo Sim, the communication between Gazebo, the simulator, and ROS is done using this bridge. Okay, I don't know if you have used the the ROS bridge from bridging messages from ROS one to ROS two before or not, but this works in a very similar way. Okay, this ROS Gazebo bridge package allows us to uh, bridge Gazebo messages and convert them, let's say, into ROS two messages or ROS one. Okay, it both it works for both for ROS one and ROS two. We are going to 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 do the examples in ROS two here. Yeah, so this is something different from Gazebo Classic. All right, in Gazebo Classic we uh, had some plugins, and um, for instance, whenever we set up a plugin for a laser, yeah, the messages were automatically published in ROS. Yeah, so we we had a topic. Where we could directly access the uh, the laser messages that were published by the laser plugin. Yes, in uh, Gazebo Sim, this works a little bit different. Okay, so the laser messages are actually published in Gazebo, not in ROS. Yeah, we are going to see an example of this later. Okay, so. Just, just to 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 make this more clear, but uh, but basically it is like this, yeah. So in in Gazebo Sim, in the newer Gazebo Sim, for instance, if we use a plugin for a laser, the the laser data is going to be published in Gazebo, okay. So if we want to use it in ROS, we have to bridge it to ROS, yeah. And in order to do this, we are going to use the ROS Gazebo bridge. Okay. Yeah, more or less. Do you do you get the the idea of this Ross Gazebo bridge? Now we are going to start with the demos and so on. But more or less, do you understand this? Uh, Matev is asking. So it's bridge between topics and the game engine Gazebo. Yes, more or less. Yes. So basically, uh, you have two communication systems. One. Is the Gazebo simulator, the engine, yeah, let's say the, the robot simulator, and the other one is ROS. Okay, you have these two communication systems. Okay, and then if you have something published in ga in uh, in Gazebo, and you want to use it in ROS for your for your ROS nodes, etc., you have to bridge it. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I see that the main idea is. Okay, uh, here Ross was verifying that the version installed is Garden, which it is, seven point six. Okay, very well. Then, this bridge can go both ways. Okay, so it's bidirectional. Okay. You can bridge messages from Gazebo to ROS, but also from ROS to Gazebo. Okay, it all depends on the keys that you use. Okay, we are going to see an example right now. Yeah, but for instance, if you use the opening symbol here, you are going to do a bridge from Gazebo Sim to ROS. If you use a closing bracket, then the bridge is going to be from ROS to Gazebo. And if you use an um, at, yeah, the bridge is going to be bidirectional. Okay. Now we are going to see different examples. So the first example that we are going to see is 
bridging from gazebo sim to ROS. Okay? So, in order to start the bridge, we need to execute a ROS to run command, yeah, like this one. So, here, here, for this first example, we are going to use the um, the old ignition simulator, okay? So, let's start by copying here the first command, yeah? The one that we are going to use in order to initialize the ROS gazebo bridge, okay? So, I'm going to copy the command here from the notebook and paste it here, okay? So, how does this command go? So, we have to specify the package. As you can see here, the package specified is ROS EGN bridge. Okay? For, for the newer Gazebo sim, so this is, this is based in uh, Ignition Gazebo. Okay? This is why we use ROS EGN bridge. For Gazebo sim, this would be exactly the same. We are going to do it later. Okay? But let me show it here. This would be the same, but instead of ROS EGN bridge, it would be ROS GZ bridge, okay? But I want I want to show both approaches, okay? So that you can see the differences. So this is the package that contains the bridge. This is the node, which is named parameter bridge. And then here we specify, first of all, the topic. In this case, the topic that we are going to bridge is, going, is chatter, okay? Then, we specify here the, the message used in ROS, okay? In this case, this topic is going to use string messages. And we have to specify, as always in ROS, the package, which is a standard messages, and the message name, which is a string, okay? Let me make this bigger. And then here we specify the type of bridge, as you can see. This is an opening, an opening bracket. So what does this mean? If you are using the opening bracket, what bridge am I doing? From gazebo to ROS, from ROS to gazebo, or bidirectional? Can somebody tell me? Very good question by Alejandro Serna. ROS message types are the same as Gazebo SIM types? No. SIM to ROS. Gazebo to ROS. Gazebo to ROS. Very well. Very well. Okay, very well, very well. You are, you are very good students. Yeah? Then, as you can see, this is the ROS message, okay? Which is a string. In, uh, and this, this is the, in this case, the ignition message. Yeah? So here we specify ignition messages and the message in this case is string message. Okay? There is one important thing here. Let me go back to the beginning here. Yeah? So not all the messages are supported. Here you, you, uh, I have placed a link here okay, that you can click and this is going to show you all the messages that are available. Yeah, here in the left side, you have the ROS message, and in the right side, you have the gazebo message. Okay? Yeah? And as you can see, they are not the same. Okay? So the, stru the structure at the end is very similar, but they are not the same. Okay? All right. Then let's start our bridge here. There we go. We execute it. Now, we are going to open a second terminal, okay? Here we are running the bridge. And then we are going to open here a second terminal. All right? Now, in this second terminal, what we are going to do is to start a subscriber for this chatter topic, okay? So let me copy the command from here and paste it here. 
Rush to Topic Echo Chatter. So I am subscriber to this chat chatter topic to see what's going on. Okay? Let's execute our um, subscriber for the topic. And so far, we cannot see anything here. Right? And then finally, let's open a third terminal. Okay? Where we are going to actually publish a message in the gazebo site. Okay? And we are going to do this with the following topic. Uh, command. Let me copy it here and show it. Yeah. So here we specify ignition topic. We specify the name of the topic where we want to publish. We specify the message that we are going to be using, which is a string message. And here the actual message that we want to publish, which in this case is hello. Okay. So here, what we are doing is to publishing one message into the chatter topic from the gazebo site. All right? Then let's execute this. <clears throat> and here, from the raw site, we can see the message. Yeah? And this happens because I have the bridge running here. Yeah. So Matef says, so this message is published in Gazebo and the bridge relays it to Ross. Exactly. This is exactly what is happening, Matef. Yeah? Does it make sense? So for instance, See what happens now? Now I am publishing the message again in Gazebo. I am publishing the message, but here from Ross I cannot see anything. Why? Because I have stopped the bridge, right? So this connection between Gazebo and uh, Ross can only happen when I have the bridge running. Yeah? Now I have the bridge running, so if I publish a message from the Gazebo site, I can see it from the ROS site. Okay? Yeah? Does it, does it make sense? Can we also soup two messages in Gazebo? Yes. You can. You can, Matev. So from uh, uh, Gazebo topics work in a similar way as Ross topics, okay? So you can publish as you can as you you have just seen. You can also subscribe to Gazebo topics. We are going to see all these in a moment, okay? All right. Then let's see the other example, right? So now we are going to check the other example, which is Ross to Gazebo bridge, okay? then the very first thing that we need to do is to initialize the bridge, yeah? So for this, we have this command here. I'm going to copy it from the notebook and execute it here in the first shell, yeah? So as you can see, this command now uses the new nomenclature, yeah? I'm not using the old one, which is with ignition, but the new one, yeah? So ROS to run, ROS GZ bridge, parameter bridge, and then I specify the topic name, the ROS message used. I, I, in this case, I change here the symbol from an opening bracket to a closing bracket, okay? Because now I want to do the bridge from ROS to Gazebo, okay? And then at the end, I specify the Gazebo message, okay? Note that I am specifying GZ instead of ignition, okay? But basically, as you can see, the command is very, very similar. It's almost the same, just some uh, keywords that change from ignition to gazebo, okay? Then, let's start the bridge here. Now, I'm going to start a subscriber from gazebo. So, uh, here, uh, Matev was asking this a moment ago. This is a subscriber from Gazebo. 
Yeah? So now here in the second terminal, instead of a raw subscriber, I'm going to start a gazebo subscriber. Yeah? Gazebo topic E, this means echo, and T. This is the topic name. Okay? So gazebo topic echo of chatter. So I am subscribing right now to the messages published into chatter from the gazebo site. Okay? And then now in the third terminal, what I'm going to do is to publish from the raw site. Yeah? So it's the other way around. <coughs> then here, <coughs> sorry, in the third terminal, I am publishing from the raw site a message into the chatter topic using a string message with the following content. Hello here. Okay? And I'm publishing one single message. So if I publish here from the raw site, I can see this message from the gazebo site because I am running here the bridge. Yes? Do you see the difference? Does, does it make sense? I see one can publish gazebo message to ROS2, but why if gazebo it is not running? Is it? I see one can publish gazebo message to ROS2, but why if gazebo is not running? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So you don't have to you don't have to have a um a, a, a running gazebo simulation in order to publish messages. Okay? So you so what you are doing is to publish messages using the gazebo transport, let's say. Okay? That is independent from the simulation. Side question. If both ROS2 and Gazebo SIM are developed or managed by Open Robotics, what's the point of having different messages types and the need to bridge them? Why doesn't Gazebo speak ROS? Very good question. Very good question, Daniel Alvarez. Um, I mean, probably there are other reasons behind, but one of the reasons is that this allows for modularity. Okay? What, that the, what does this mean? This means that you can develop... Um, plugins for Gazebo using only the Gazebo API. Okay? And then you can, ju in order to use them in ROS, all you have to do is to bridge them. Okay? And this, uh, this is very helpful, especially for, uh, yeah, for developing plugins for, for Gazebo SIM. Your own custom plugins. Okay, probably there are other reasons behind behind there, but uh, this is one of them. Okay. All right. Then let's keep going. <clears throat> and the uh, last example of this first part is the bidirectional bridge, okay? So we have seen the gazebo to ROS bridge, the ROS to gazebo bridge, but we can also create a bidirectional bridge, which goes in both ways, okay? And we can do this. Here we have the uh, command example, yeah? ROS to run, ROS gazebo bridge, parameter bridge, topic, ROS message, and here we are using the at symbol, okay? And this means bidirectional bridge. Yeah? This is explained here at the beginning. All right? Yeah? And this generates, a, as you can see, it generates the two bridges from Gazebo to ROS and from ROS to Gazebo. Okay? Yes, and then here, for instance, in this case, you can subscribe 
to the topic and you can publish from the raw site and it's going to work. You can publish from the Gazebo site and of course uh, it's going to work. Yeah. There we go. All right. Now, okay, uh, this is very nice, but actually uh, these are just very, very dummy examples, right? So these are very dummy. No, no, nobody wants to create, uh, wants to know all this in order to, to, to publish messages into a chatter topic, which is basically uh, useless, all right? So now we are going to see actually how does this apply to robotics development, okay? And for this, we are going to see how to launch the Gazebo Rush Bridge from a launch file, okay? Now, uh, all this here we have been using the... the, the um, the command line tools, yeah? But of course, we can also start a Gazebo bridge from a launch file, yeah? Uh, when, when you are developing in ROS2, when you are creating simulations, etc., you are going to be working with launch files. And you can also start a bridge from a launch file, and it is very easy, it's like this. So you specify the package name, which is ROS Gazebo bridge, the executable, which is parameter bridge, this is the name of the node, which you can put whatever you want, and then here you pass the arguments. So the topic name, the ROS message type, and the gazebo message type. Just as we have seen here in the command line tool, yeah? Where we specify the topic name, the ROS message type, and the gazebo message type. And of course, we, we have to specify the type of bridge, yeah, which we are doing here. Yeah, the first Character here is the type of the bridge, bidirectional from Gazebo to Ro, uh, from ROS to Gazebo and from Gazebo to ROS. Okay, and you can even add some remappings for the topics if you want. Okay, now how does this apply? Okay, now we are going to start the simulation that we have at the beginning of the notebook. Okay, so I'm going to ask you all to scroll up at the beginning to the beginning of the notebook, to the section, how to launch the simulation, okay? And here we are going to execute the following command in order to start this simulation, which is based in Gazebo Sim, yeah? So let's copy this first command here and execute it in the first web shell, all right? There we go. Now, you can just wait a few seconds and the simulation is going to start, okay? There we go, here it's getting started. <coughs> there it goes. Okay, and here this window is going to automatically pop up. You can maximize it here to visualize it better. Yeah, and you can zoom, and you are going to find the following Gazebo Sim simulation. Here with this robot in the center, this is a Rosbot Excel robot. Okay? By Husarion. And as you can see, this simulation uses the new interface, so it's based on Gazebo Sim. Okay? And as you can see, this robot here in the uh, top, in the in the top of the of the chassis, it has a laser, right, mounted here. Let me get closer to it. Yes, here in the top, if you zoom, this is a lidar. Okay. Now, this lidar is publishing messages using the gazebo transport. Okay, what does this mean? This means that if I do a ROS2 to topic list, I am not going to see, well, actually I can see the topic here, it's a scan, yeah? But if you subscribe to it, ROS2 to topic echo, uh, sorry, this is, because of the keyboard type, I need to change it. There we go. ROS2 to topic echo, scan. So, 
if we subscribe to the scan topic, we cannot see anything. Yeah? Why is this? Wh why do you think I cannot see anything from the scan topic? Not bridge yet, so we need the bridge running because bridge is not running. Okay, obviously, very well. This one was an easy one, right? Now, how can we generate the bridge here? Okay, first of all, I'm going to I'm going to show you that the laser information is actually being published in the Gazebo site. Yeah, for this you can run the uh, command, for instance, uh, gz. You can run GC topic H for help, and here you are going to see all the different options of the commands, of the GC topic commands, okay? For instance, here you can see that in order to list all topics, you have to use the L flag, yeah? So I can run GC topic L, and here I'm going to see a list with all the topics, yeah? Now, you can also subscribe and listen to the scan topic, in this case by using the echo, yeah? See? So this is going to be something like GZ topic, E for echo, and then T for specifying the topic, which is scan. Yeah? So here I am subscribing to the Gazebo uh, message, to the Gazebo scan topic. And here you can see that in Gazebo, the laser is publishing the messages. Yeah? Here you have the intensities, you are going to have the ranges also. Yeah? So actually, from the Gazebo side, we have the messages. The problem is from the ROS side. From the ROS side, we cannot see anything. Okay? Yeah? This is because we are generating this information using a Gazebo SIM plugin. All right? So, what are we going to do here? What we are going to do is to add a bridge to this launch file, all right? Then where can we find this launch file? Well, for that, we are going to open the code editor, yeah? The code editor, you are going to find it here in the uh, bottom menu. It is the second icon, right beside the web shell, yeah? Here, if, if, you, uh, if you go over it, you are going to see here code editor. And if you click here, this is going to open the code editor which is going to give you access to, uh, to all the uh, folders, files, and everything that are inside this project, okay? In this case, we are going to go inside the rush to workspace SRC, and now we are going to go inside Rosbot Excel ROS, here, and Rosbot Excel Gazebo, okay? And inside here, you are going to find this launch file, uh, this launch folder, sorry, with the empty underscore simulation dot launch dot pi. Yeah? If you look at the notebook, this is the launch file that we are executing. Yeah? The empty simulation from the Rosbot Excel Gazebo package. Yeah? So in the code editor, you can double click in this file and it's going to be opened here. So here you can see the contents of the launch file. All right? So, how do we generate now a bridge for the scan topic? Well, let's go to the notebook and let me have a look here at the structure, yeah? So, it should be something like this. So, what I'm going to do is to directly copy this from the notebook, okay? I'm going to select all this, copy, and then here, in the uh, launch file, I'm going to paste it somewhere. For instance, right here, below the um, GZ spawn entity, here. I'm going to paste it here. Uh, let me move this there. There we go. Okay? So this way I have the wall structure. Then, the package is ROS GZ bridge, executable is parameter bridge, 
and the name is GC Bridge. Okay, now let's fill in the arguments. So for the topic name here, what should I put? You are going to help me in this exercise. Okay, we are going to do it together. What should I put here? Can somebody tell me? Scan. Okay, very well. Amna says scan, also Luis agrees. All right, so let's put here scan. Now, what should I put here in the ROS message type? Does somebody know? Which workspace do I paste the GZ bridge text? You have to paste it here in the empty simulation dot launch dot py file. Okay? You can paste it here in line 88, for instance. It doesn't matter the line, but. Okay, I'm gonna say sensor messages, laser scan. Almost, almost. Almost, Amna, you are only missing something. Yes. So I am asking, what should I put here in the ROS message type? There we go. Sebastian, Sebastian already provides the answers to, 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 to the two of them. Yeah? So it's sensor messages, message, laser scan. Very well. Okay. Then... Let me get from here. Sensor messages, message laser scan. And finally, in the gazebo message type, it is like this. gz.messages.laser scan. Very well. And finally, what bridge should I use? What symbol do you think I should use? Last question. Gazebo to ROS or ROS to Gazebo, bidirectional. Which which type of, of bridge would you, would you use? Matev suggests bidirectional. Amna says, G okay, GC to ROS. Okay, bidirectional, bidirectional could be used here, but I prefer to use Gazebo to ROS, okay? Because actually we are not going to be we, we don't need to bridge messages of the laser from ROS to Gazebo. It doesn't make any sense because the information of the laser is generated in the Gazebo site by the plugin, right? So actually, we only need to bridge from Gazebo site to ROS, right? So why would we create a bidirectional which uh, is going to add more... Uh, more, uh, um, more uh, is going to use more resources when actually the only one we need is from Gazebo to ROS, right? Yeah? Then we are going to use, in this case, I'm, we are going to bridge from Gazebo to ROS, which is this symbol, precisely, okay? This means from Gazebo to ROS. You have it here in the notebook, the beginning also, yeah? This, the, the opening bracelet means from Gazebo sim to ROS. So we are going to use this symbol. And that's it. So all these, we don't need it. We can remove it. We don't need any, any, any remapping, neither. We can, we can use the, the scan topic. We don't need to, to remap it to anything else. So I'm going to remove also this. OK? And now, in order to complete this, I need to start this node. Yeah, this GC bridge node. So in order to actually start it, I need to come down here and add it here to the launch description, right? In this case, I already have it here, but it's commented. So what I'm going to do is to uncomment it, okay? So this way, I'm going to start this GC bridge node along with the simulation, okay? So now I'm going to save here. And in order for the change to take place, what I need to do is to recompile, okay? So I need to go to the ROS2 workspace and recompile, okay? So that the changes that I have done to the launch file are applied. 
There we go. I am recompiling. Okay, now I'm going to source the workspace, and now I'm going to relaunch the simulation. There we go. Okay. There we go. We have the simulation here running with the robot in the center. And let's see what happens now if we subscribe to the scan topic from Ross. Voila. So now we can see the messages of the laser from the Ross side. Why? Because we have added the gazebo bridge. Yeah? And if you want to visualize it even, for instance, you can uh, visualize the laser in RVs and everything. All, all the typical things that you do from Ross like visualizing the laser from Ervis, you can do them now. Yeah? So I'm going to add here a laser visualization for the scan topic. Yeah? And right now I cannot see anything because the simulation doesn't have anything. Yeah? But for instance, if I spawn something something here in front of the of the laser, in front of the robot, like here. There we go. Yeah, so now in RVs, already I can visualize the laser. Yeah? Yes, the bidirectional type is going to use more computing power. Yes, Alejandro. It always, because it needs to be looking at more things. Yeah? So the simplest, the better. Yeah? Does it make sense? Have you been able to generate the bridge for the scan topic in your simulation also? Ah, to configure RVs, yeah, I went over this very quick because it's not the purpose of this class, okay? But uh, I basically just changed the fixed frame to base link, for instance, okay? And then to add the laser display, you just do add. You select by topic, and here you look for the laser, which is down here, scan. Yeah. Then you double click, and this is going to add the display here to RVs. Okay. And then you need to you need to put something in front of the laser, like I have done. Yeah, because if you don't put anything, the laser is not going to detect anything, right? Yeah, and that's it. So, um, so yeah, here we have reviewed a little bit the basics of this Ross Gazebo Bridge package and how to use it in order to 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 um, communicate Gazebo topics and Gazebo messages with Ross too. Okay, and this is a, a new thing that has been introduced in Gazebo Sim that uh, was not used in in, uh, in Gazebo Classic. So it's very interesting and it's uh, it's good that you learn how to use it. Okay? And um, yeah, this is just a very tiny part. Here at the, at the end of the notebook, as always, I have left a link to a new course that we have just published. Yeah, if you, you click here, you are going to be redirected to the new course that we have just published, which is Introduction to Gazebo Sim with ROS2. Yeah? And in this course, you are going to learn uh, how to use this Gazebo Bridge and uh, many more things related to the new Gazebo Sim simulator. Okay? So you, if you are interested in learning more, you have here the Academy uh, course to do so. All right? And... Um, Which setup file do I need to source? Ah, you mean after you mean after doing the changes, Luis? Yes, here uh, Matev has answered. Has answered to you. You need to source uh, setup.bash from the Rust to workspace. 
All right, then, uh, yeah, so I hope that you have enjoyed uh, the class. I hope that you have learned uh, something. And, uh, yeah, you, ca you can keep practicing with, the, with this project. This, this project uh, is for you, so you can keep working with it, doing different tests. And, uh, yeah, I hope that you liked it. I, ho I hope that you have learned something. And, uh, yeah, I will see you again in, in the next class. Thanks to all of you for attending. And as I always say, keep pushing your Ross learning. Bye-bye.